welcome to the module on significance of dietary fiber for a healthy life now let us study in detail on how the human body processes the fiber and its innumerable health benefits intake of dietary fiber provides numerous health benefits dietary fiber or roughage is the indigestible portion of food derived from plants several researches have been conducted on beneficial effect of dietary fiber on health after going through this module you will be able to explain what is dietary fiber learn the types benefits demerits of excess dietary fiber intake now let us understand what is fiber and its various components the main aspect of dietary fiber is its non digestibility in small intestine dietary fiber is the component of carbohydrate polymer and it is a non starch polysaccharide which are a primary component of plant cell walls the non starch polysaccharides are hemicellulose cellulose pectins and hemoglobins the other plant components of algal origin such as gums mucilages are also included in the class of dietary fiber inulin and resistant starch are the other indigestible polysaccharides which also comprises of non digestible carbohydrates that pass through the small intestine without any change let us take a look at the various classification of dietary fiber based on the digestibility and water solubility the dietary fiber is classified as digestible and non digestible polysaccharide carbohydrates that are present in the cell wall of the matrix oligosaccharides low molecular weight fractions non digestible insoluble polysaccharide carbohydrates from animal origin the dietary fiber are classified generally as water insoluble and water soluble dietary fiber water insoluble fiber is a long rough thread like filament it is found in ripe vegetables and in some kind of foods insoluble fiber is considered as gastrointestinal healthy fiber due to its laxative effect as these fibers do not dissolve in water they pass through the gastrointestinal tract without any change and they speed up the passage of stomach contents in the gut water soluble fiber attracts the water and forms a gel and it slows the digestion it also delays the emptying of stomach content and gives satiety satiety is nothing but it is a feeling of fullness this effect has many physiological benefits which will be discussed in the later part the composition of dietary fiber provides more physiological benefits let us study in brief about the type of dietary fiber and the sources from which they can be derived cellulose and hemicellulose are found in nuts whole wheat whole grains brown rice bran skin of vegetable and fruits insoluble dietary fiber that is lignin it is present in flax seeds and vegetables soluble fiber like inulin and oligofructose are extracted from onion by products of sugar that is production from chicory root and beets mucilages and beta glucans are derived from oats beans oat bran flax seeds barley berries beans orange apple etc pectins and gums are present in fruits seeds berries it is also extracted from citrus peel the pectin especially it is used as a sitting agent polydextrose and polyols are derived from dextrose and citric acid psyllium is present in high fiber cereals resistant starch it is found in plant cell walls unripened bananas legumes and oatmeal whereas the sweet dextrin as we all know it is present in wheat starch having understood the types of fiber and its sources now let us look at their key properties and functions let's get started with the properties of water insoluble fiber the features of water insoluble fiber are water retention fibrous and spongy character and fermentability in the stomach and small intestine the water insoluble fiber absorbs water and then it swells this helps in stimulating the intestine 
activating the peristaltic movement and helps to promote the bowel movement the other character is fibrous and spongy insoluble fiber when masticated when it is chewed and consumed it provides satiety that is the feeling of fullness and helps to prevent overeating it also strengthens the jaw and improves the alignment of teeth water insoluble fiber after reaching the large intestine it ferments and then it decomposes it also acts uh, acts like a very good thing that is it increases the uh, bacteria which is present in the gut flora and improves the intestinal environment now let's learn the physical and biological properties of water soluble dietary fiber the features of water soluble dietary fiber are viscosity absorptive property and fermentability water soluble fiber it is rich in some kind of diet it is slowly transit through the stomach and intestine due to the viscous nature it helps in reducing the hunger and prevent overeating it also prevents the rapid increase of blood sugar after consuming some kind of food by delaying the absorption of sugar water soluble fiber absorbs the cholesterol and bile acids to be excreted from the body the intestinal environment is improved when water soluble fiber ferments and decomposes increasing the gut friendly bacteria this has a healing effect on the intestine regarding the dietary fiber intake it has been estimated that optimum fiber intake should be around 32 to 45 gram per day what really are the health benefits of dietary fiber one may ask now let's understand their benefits in detail india has one of the highest prevalent rate of cardiovascular disease in the world having said that let's now discover in detail the role of dietary fiber in maintaining a healthy heart in india the prevalence of cardiovascular disease such as stroke coronary artery disease ischemic heart disease hypertension etc it affects a majority of people it is estimated that there could be 30 million coronary heart disease patients in india out of which 14 million will be in urban and rural areas respectively by 2020 because of the poor lifestyle pattern and dietary habits the prevalence rate is rapidly increasing day by day there is a close relationship between coronary heart disease and dietary patterns following a proper diet pattern that is high fiber diet can help to reduce the risk of several percentages dietary fiber has a very prominent role in reducing the risk of coronary heart disease it was suggested that high fiber intake lowers the prevalence of stroke peripheral hypertension obesity diabetes etc various mechanisms are put forward to show the effect of dietary fiber on cardiovascular system some of them are changing the absorption of cholesterol reabsorption of bile acids alterations in the synthesis of lipoprotein in the liver clearance of lipoprotein from the blood stream the projected principle may help to reduce the plasma levels of lipid cholesterol and ldl that is low density lipoprotein subsequently reducing the heart risk that is risk of coronary heart disease moreover dietary fiber can delay the absorption of carbohydrate and fat from the small intestine and affects the insulin metabolism it may lower the le uh, level of circulating triglycerides by which it helps to reduce the risk of coronary heart disease and increased consumption of soluble fibers like pectins beta glucans and guar gums are found to have a significant effect on lowering the blood cholesterol levels in patients suffering from hyperlipidemia this can be achieved only by consuming the recommended intake of soluble fiber research findings highlight that supplemented or uh, supplementation of daily hyperlipidemic subjects of this kind of dietary fiber it helps to decrease the serum triglyceride levels 
whole grain intake along with sufficient increase in the fruits and vegetables will reduce the risk of any type of heart disease. India is the second leading country for diabetes. It was estimated that 62 million people in India are diabetes. The prevalence of diabetes is predicted to double globally from 171 million in 2000 to 366 million in 2020 with the maximum increase in India. By 2030, there will be 79.4 million people with diabetes in India. The increase in prevalence of diabetes, it is due to the poor lifestyle pattern, lack of physical activity, consumption of refined carbohydrates and high intake of saturated fat. The Institute of Medicine suggested that dietary fiber intake significantly reduces the risk of diabetes. So, consumption of whole grains has a greater benefit in reducing the blood sugar level in type 2 diabetes. The presence of dietary fiber delays the absorption of glucose from the small intestine and slowing down the increase of serum or blood glucose level. The proposed mechanism of blood sugar level controlled by dietary fiber indicates that viscous fiber delays the gastric emptying and the glucose absorption. Thus, viscous fiber seems to be particularly effective in decreasing the blood glucose and insulin response in the management of glycemic control in diabetes. The non-viscous dietary fiber, it controls the blood sugar level by avoiding the risk of developing insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes. Now, let's find out how this high fiber content helps the human body to fight obesity. Obesity, it is a growing public health problem in developed and developing countries and it is posing a threat for many non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, etc. Foods that are rich in dietary fiber helps to prevent obesity by adding a bulk to the diet. Dietary fiber also provides the feeling of fullness as I told you already thereby playing a very important role in the weight control and energy balance. It also it is also postulated that low glycemic index food gives more satiety than foods with high glycemic index. Studies were done to evaluate the effect of fiber in preventing obesity it was shown that delayed gastric emptying effect it is provided by the consumption of soluble fiber like pectins which is present in fruits cereals this process occurs mainly in the small intestine the mechanism behind this is viscous dietary fiber forms the gel after reaching the small intestine and slows the absorption of carbohydrate from the small intestine and making them less accessible with the digestive enzymes and thereby reducing the content with the intestinal mucosa providing the feeling of fullness. Consumption of dietary fiber significantly decreases the energy intake. Less intake of fat can be brought about by increasing the fiber intake. So both soluble and insoluble fiber leads to weight loss. Insoluble fiber may play more prominent role in weight loss. So thus dietary fiber intake can help to prevent the risk of obesity and its related complications. Dietary fiber affects the entire gastrointestinal tract from mouth to anus. High fiber foods are less energy dense but require a long time to digest. Soluble or viscous fiber usually delays the emptying of gastric contents. Soluble fiber delays the intestinal transit time whereas the insoluble fiber creates the intestinal hurry by adding bulk to the diet. Most of the dietary fibers are fermented partially or completely by colonic microflora. The colon contains approximately 400 different anaerobic species of bacteria. So the main fermentation pathway generates pyruvate from the hexose sugars that is from the undigested carbohydrate.
the colonic bacteria produces methane, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, short chain fatty acids that is acetane, acetate, propionate and butyrate, even lactase also. The bacteria in turn generate energy and carbon atoms from the fermented products leading to increased colonic bacteria content in the gut. It is estimated that about 30 gram of bacteria are produced from 100 gram of carbohydrate that is fermented in the gut. The physiological effects of colonic flora and fermentation products are they act like a immune metabolites that is modulators. Example, they absorb the procarcinogens to promote the attack of malignant cells. They inhibit the growth of harmful yeast and bacteria. It helps to improve the mineral absorption. Even it helps in reducing the food intolerance and allergies. Stimulate the growth of intestinal microflora. Helps to reduce the undesirable components like amines, ammonia, phenols and secondary bile acids. It helps to synthesize B complex vitamins and some digestive enzymes. Helps to decrease the colonic and fecal pH and inhibit the growth of pathogenic microorganisms. Short chain fatty acids when they are absorbed in the bloodstream after the glucose and lipid metabolism they alter this kind of thing and acts as a source of energy. Several non-digestible carbohydrates that is oligosaccharides, inulin, polydextrose, they have shown to exhibit a prebiotic property by promoting the growth of lactic and bacteria in the gut. The gut and colonic functions are denoted by the consistency of the stool, its weight and frequency of defecation. Transit time is the time required by the substance to pass through the gut and it has a wide variations between the individuals that is it may be starting from 24 to 72 hours. The later part of the time that is the later part of this time starts from 16 to 64 hours it is spent in the large intestine. The important aspect of dietary fiber is increasing the stool weight and decreasing the transit time so thus it prevents the disease of large bowel. The short chain fatty acids improve the peristalsis with the gas produced. Resistant starch it is known as to increase the fecal excretion of non-starch polysaccharides aiding in the good gut environment that is the maintaining the gastrointestinal environment. Constipation is defined as the difficulty in defecation in terms of stool consistency and as well as stool weight. The dietary fiber has tremendous effect in relieving the symptoms of constipation and also it prevents the formation of hemorrhoids. To get relief from constipation and to increase in the fecal bulk and stool weight alone are not considered. So other factors are to be involved in this. Out of many dietary fibers, wheat bran has shown to be most effective in increasing the stool bulk. All absorbed, all non-absorbed carbohydrate may prevent the constipation through water holding and thereby increasing the bacterial mass. It has been estimated that the optimum fiber intake should be around 32 to 45 grams per day in order to reach the fecal mass of 160 to 200 gram per day. This helps to prevent the risk of constipation. Diverticulosis losses of the colon it is characterized by the colonic wall herniations which are usually asymptomatic. The pain due to bacterial action when inflamed is called diverticulitis. It is also termed as fiber deficiency disease. Dietary fiber is shown to decrease the symptoms related to diverticulitis. Non-viscous fiber like cellulose is found to be effective for the management of this type of conditions. Other fiber rich foods like wheat bran, polysaccharides and whole grains also help to relieve constipation subsequently preventing this disorder. Chronic constipation is the ultimate cause for diverticulitis. The protective effect of fiber helps to increase the stool weight and it decreases the transit time and also it decreases the intracolonic pressure. Fiber also helps in the betterment of immune system. Let's deep into this mechanism by which dietary fiber improves the immune system. Oligosaccharides such as inulin have been studied extensively to promote the growth of bacteria in the colon. The bacteria and lactobacilli promotes health by generating the short chain fatty acids 
and it stimulates the immune system. Studies have been conducted by supplementing inulin and they found that there is a bacteria count, there is an increase in fe fecal bacteria count and have a significant effect on circulating lymphocytes. The effect of prebiotic and its fiber has been studied in infants and found to have benefits like promotion of postnatal immune development, decreases the atopic dermatitis, respiratory infection and improves the bowel health. Dietary fiber also assists in the, uh, in the fight against cancer. Let us explore how. Cancer is one among the non-communicable diseases posing a severe threat to the community in developed and developing countries as we all know. Colon cancer is also a leading cause of morbidity and mortality in both men and women. Evidence suggests that increased intake of wide variety of fruits and raw vegetables along with dietary fiber provides the protection against colon cancer and it promotes the health of colon. Dietary fiber which is fermented very slowly for example cereal bran has a direct effect on colonic health by promoting the laxation, decreasing the transit time and by diluting and binding the bile acids and carcinogens. Dietary fiber intake, it also reduces the risk of breast cancer among postmenopausal women. Whole grain intake reduces the risk of breast cancer and high dietary fiber, it reduces the incidence of stomach cancer. Apart from its direct benefits, it has several other indirect benefits like aiding the absorption of minerals in the intestine and maintenance of skin tone, anti-aging, etc. The site for mineral absorption is the large intestine. Colonic fermentation of dietary fiber such as non-digestible oligosaccharides, it improves the absorption of minerals like phosphorus, calcium, magnesium and iron. So this have a positive benefit on increasing the bone density. The other mechanism involved in mineral absorption is by the presence of short chain fatty acids which is generated by the fermentation of oligosaccharides. This reduces the pH of the colon and which increases the solubility of calcium making it more available for the passive diffusion across the colonic epithelium. So the other substances like polyamines and butyrates has a potential effect on cell growth and expansion of gut absorptive area and hence it increases the amount of proteins which can be transported which can be transported if consumed in abundance and over a longer period it has share uh, its own disadvantages hence it is desirable to balance the fiber in the diet too little and too much of it need to be avoided. Despite of having many potential health benefits, overconsumption of dietary fiber that is consuming in excess creates adverse health effects. Some of the adverse effects are that is high fiber diet tends to be bulky and have a very less energy density. So individuals with less appetite, aged people etc. when they partake such high fiber diet they will have less intake of energy and other nutrients also. Many studies have reported that when the fiber intake is above the normal level that is it is when it is greater than 75 or 80 grams per day flatulence occurs. Apart from this it is reported to create gastrointestinal discomfort in subjects with irritable bowel syndrome. The higher intake of fructose oligosaccharides leads to abdominal discomfort, flatulence, bloating and abdominal cramps. Fermentation of dietary fiber increases the mineral bioavailability but in contrast the other type of fiber like phytate it seems to have a good effect that is it decreases the absorption of several minerals in the small intestine particularly iron, magnesium, zinc, calcium, phytate binds and then it mixes with the mineral and it decreases the absorption. Optimum level of fiber intake should be followed on daily basis to obtain the maximum health benefits. The dietary fiber exhibits both health protective and disease reversal benefits. So from children to the aged people 
adequate fiber intake should be recommended to prevent the prevalence of non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, cancer, etc.